Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue to work some test type problems, smaller type problems that can be in the format of multiple choice questions. We're just going to be working the problem, not looking at multiple choices here, however. So let's take a look at these. The following information relates to the manufacturing operations of the year. So we've got raw materials for both the beginning and the ending. We have finished goods for the beginning and the ending. And they are asking us the raw materials used in the manufacturing during the year totaled 123,000 raw materials purchased during the year is what so we have to back into the purchasing number again what we're doing is doing things kind of a little bit backwards that we would normally do in real life that's how a lot of multiple choice questions will work it tests the knowledge but uh, it tests it in a bit backwards way so the normal formula if we think about the normal formula uh, we're going to take the beginning raw materials uh, plus purchases less ending raw materials and that will usually give us the manufacturing for the year so we have beginning raw materials is usually and that's going to be the 62,000 and that's coming from this number of course and then we're usually going to have purchases and purchases is the unknown so that's kind of like our x we'll put that x we'll make that that's what we're looking for i'm going to highlight it we'll make it green that's going to be green because we're looking for that and then we usually say less ending raw materials and the ending raw materials they say ending raw materials are going to be that 65,000 so 65,000 we're gonna have to uh, that's minus for less and that will give us the raw materials you and of course in this case they gave us that number then that number happens to be 123,000 they gave us that number right here so that's usually what we are calculating they're gonna give us that so if we see this then we can kind of think of okay well we've got 62,000 plus what minus the 65 is going to give us this we could write that out in, a, in an algebraic equation write it out this way we could say 62,000 and we're going to say plus x minus uh, 65,000 equals and then 123,000 and so I'm going to just tighten this up a bit and there we have that and so now of course we're going to solve for x right here and that means that we can we've got the 62 and the 65 are on the same side so we can combine those out. so i'm going to do it this way i'm going to have x here i'm going to say x and i'm going to say minus because the 65 which is basically kind of a negative here is greater than the 62 which is basically positive and so then we're going to say equals the 65 thousand minus the 62 thousand so now that of course gets rid of those two and that's going to equal the 123 thousand here now we got to get rid of the 3000 it's a minus 3000 so therefore we're going to add 3000 to both sides 3000 and 3000 and that will leave us with x uh and then minus and of course uh this is a negative minus that's going to bring us to zero and then we're going to add this this is 123 plus the 3000 and then so that means that we have x is equal to 126,000. all right so that we'll plug that in here now and see if that works 126,000 is x and i'm just going to rewrite our equation over here just so we can see it side by we've got the 126 thousand and we have the 65 less the 65 so if we did the calculation will, will we come up with this 123 it's the 62 plus the purchases less the ending raw materials and that will give us the 123 so we plugged it back in check the number looks correct now, calculate the cost of goods sold using the following information so let's start writing down our cost of goods sold calculation we're going to start off with the finished goods inventory at the beginning which they gave us right here so that's going to be this uh, 232.5. So I'm just going to type that in, 232.5. And then we, instead of having purchases as we would have in a manufacturer or a retail type store, we're going to have the stuff that we made, the stuff that we have produced. And we are going to call that cost of goods manufactured. And if we look at our data up here, we're going to say, hmm, cost of goods manufactured. I don't, I don't see that up there. So that's that's going to be a problem. We're going to have to calculate the cost of goods manufactured. So that's going to be like our X now. And uh, that's our unknown as of yet in this formula. And then we, we're going to have the finished goods inventory at the end. 
And we're going to say that's less, meaning it's a subtraction problem. So it's the beginning inventory plus not purchases, but what we made minus the ending inventory, the ending inventory being the 239.1. And that will give us our cost of goods sold. Cost of, that's what will give us this number here. So that's what we're looking for. We'll go ahead and put the underline here. Now, in order to do that, we need to calculate the cost of goods manufactured. So we need to plug in, find this number. How do we calculate the cost of goods manufactured? Well, we're going to put in all the factors of production. We're going to start off with the work in process, the work that's going through the process. I'm going to call it work in process uh, January 1st at the beginning. And they gave us this number. That's the uh, 118.9. So that's the work in process at the beginning of the period. Let's put that over here, 1189. And then we're going to add to it what we did th throughout this process. And what we did is we have uh, direct material that we put into the process and they gave us that number that's part of our production process that's going to be the 298.9 we have the direct labor in this process and they gave us that number that's the 132.4 so the 132.4 is part of our inventory part of our production process as well as the factory overhead That's going to be part of our inventory process. That's this number here. That's going to be the 264.4. The general administrative, not part of our manufacturing. Neither is the selling. Those are going to be the period costs. And then we've got the work in process. Or we'll say less, minus the work in process at the end, which in this case is December uh, 31st. So less this uh, work in process, the 126.3. So the 1263, I'm putting it in there as a positive number uh, and representing 1263 that it's a subtraction problem by the less over here. So if we were to do this, then we would say it's the 118.9 plus the 298.9 plus the 132.4 plus the 264.4 minus the 126.3. And that will give us, that's how much we produced during the period. That's how much we made in our production process. We can then plug that number in over here. That's our cost of goods manufactured there. That's our, we can put that here. That's our cost of goods manufactured that we have now figured out. We'd say that number came from this number. And that can give us our cost of goods sold now. So our cost of goods sold then would be the beginning finished goods plus not purchases, but what we made because we're making stuff this time minus the uh, ending cost of goods. And that will give us our uh, 681.7. Next one says, use the following data to compute total manufacturing costs. So what we're doing here is we're basically just trying to see which of these costs are part of the manufacturing, part of, of our inventory that we need to kind of include in the asset of inventory as opposed to like period costs, which are not part of the inventory. They don't need to be capitalized. So if we go through this, I'm just going to list the same numbers over here that are going to be part of our production process. And so we're going to have sales commission. Is that included in our inventory? Not No, that's, that's in the sales process. That's period cost generally. Uh, direct labor, that is going to be in our asset of inventory. We're going to have to include that. So that's going to be part of it. Indirect materials, we're going to have to put in the overhead, but we are going to include it in our inventory in some way. Anything that says factory that's where we make our inventory. <laughs> so anything that says factory is going to be part of our inventory, our production process. So that's going to be in there. So factory supplies, we got factory indirect labor. Again, direct meaning when we talk about direct and indirect, we're meaning direct to the process of making our inventory. So that's going to be direct in terms of making inventory. And then we have depreciation. This is not included, not because it's depreciation, but because it doesn't say factory, it says office. So that's like where the accountants work and whatnot. We're not, our, our work is in the period cost, generally not in the uh, production of the materials cost for the most part. Uh, direct materials, that of course is going to be direct into the inventory. And then we've got the corporate office salaries. Again, the, the managers and stuff are usually not part of directly making the inventory. So the, the managers and whatnot would not be included in the inventory cost. And then we have depreciation this time factory factory keyword so that's going to be included and we just add those up if we sum those up that will be the information in the factory and and note that obviously um if, if we have a multiple choice question many of these other types of combinations of of answers that will either include or exclude one or two numbers will probably be included so you want to kind of 
uh, run the calculation before looking at the you know the multiple choice answer. Next one we have calculate the cost of goods manufactured using the following information. So this one uh, looks pretty similar to the last one except now we're calculating the cost of goods manufactured and rather than having to calculate the cost of goods sold and the cost of goods manufactured. So keep those keep those two separate. This is the cost of goods manufactured not the cost of goods sold. So when we start this off, we're going to say cost goods manufactured. That's what we're going to calculate. And note that we're, we're basically working with the work in process. And we're doing the same kind of a similar calculation to the cost of goods sold. But now we're trying to work with the stuff from the work in process that is, is being processed through the processing de department when we're making our inventory. So we're going to start off with beginning work in process. I'll call it work in process January 1st. They gave us that number right here. So that's what we're going to include right there. And that's going to be the 1191 and then we're going to add to that uh, the stuff that's included in the work in process. I could indent this too if we wanted to. I'm going to go to the home tab, alignment, indent, everything under the under the heading here. And then we have direct labor or direct materials they give us first. Materials. All right. And they gave us that number. That's this number here. So we're going to pull that number down. We're going to say 2991. And we could indent this by going to the home tab, indent. And then we're on the next one, direct labor. So direct labor, and they gave us that number 132.6, so that's going to be the 132.6, and then also included is factory overhead. I'm just going to say factory overhead, and factory overhead, they gave us this number, so that's here. We're going to say that's the 264.6, and then we're going to say less, so those are the items that are included, less the uh, ending work in process, work in process on December 31st and so that's the subtraction problem I'm going to put it in here as a positive number but it's a subtraction problem indicated by the less and that's going to be this number here so that's going to be the 126.5 so there we have that now you might be asking well why isn't this included because it's a period cost it's not in the inventory selling period cost not in the inventory and finished goods that's in the calculation of cost of goods sold not cost of goods manufactured therefore let's calculate this out we got the uh 119 one starting work in process and then we included the materials and the labor and the overhead minus what is still in there at the end of the year tells us what we have then uh used and that gives us the cost of goods manufactured Next one says, using the information below, calculate the gross profit for the period. So how do we calculate gross profit? Let's just write that out first. We're going to start with sales less, say less, cost of goods sold. I'm going to abbreviate. That's going to equal gross profit. Now, this is a pretty simple formula. You would think if I looked through the numbers here that they wouldn't give me that, and I'd have to calculate maybe the cost of goods sold or something like that. But if I look through the numbers here, I say, hmm, for sales, they gave us that number. It's right here. So that's nice. 1,264,000. And, and, and we'd say, well, they couldn't have given us cost of goods sold, could they? And, but they did. So they gave us a cost. So that's the 545,000. And so sometimes it's just going to be the sales less the cost of goods sold. Uh, sometimes part of the difficulty of a multiple choice problem is the fact that they gave you, gave us in this case, a lot of data which we do not need and uh, that could be confusing in and of itself because we're going to leave this problem saying ha that was kind of looking too easy but uh, that that is what it is next one says using the information below determine the total manufacturing costs added during the year so the manufacturing costs that are added so what, what types of stuff are in the manufacturing of inventory again the direct materials direct to the inventory the direct labor and factory overhead those are the things that are going to be added to what's already in there which is going to be the beginning work in process so that kind of the tricky thing here is they didn't they didn't ask us to calculate the cost of goods manufactured which they gave us the information to do they just told us tell us the amount that was added during the period so what was added well the direct materials were added uh, the direct labor was added during the period and the uh, factory overhead was added that's all that was added and so again they kind of gave us uh, too much information here because they gave us the information to calculate cost of goods manufactured which would have been the beginning plus what was added less the ending but they only asked us to act to get what was added and again that, that's kind of the trickiness of a multiple choice question I, I guarantee in a multiple choice question that the answer will include <laughs> the calculation for the cost of goods manufactured so you got to read the read the stem carefully 
Next one says the company's direct material costs are four nine uh, four million nine. Its direct labors are eight million seven seven hundred and ten thousand, and its factory overhead six million seven hundred and ten thousand. Its prime costs are what? So the prime costs of the three are going to equal the um, materials, the direct materials four nine zero 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 plus. Uh, the direct labor, direct labor being 8710000, and those would be the prime costs. Next one says the following information relates to the manufacturing operations for the year. So we got raw materials at the beginning, raw materials at the end, and then it says the raw materials used in manufacturing during the year totaled 1093 Raw materials purchased during, during the year uh, 2, we have, that's what we're going to have to calculate. So in order to calculate, the calculation for this would generally be beginning raw materials. Raw. I'm just going to say materials. Beginning raw materials. They gave us that number. 562000 plus purchases. That's what we don't know. So they, they gave us this, again, the number that's not normally the number that we don't know. Plus purchases less minus ending raw materials is usually the calculation they gave us that number 625 and that's and that would be raw materials uh, manufactured raw materials manufactured that's what we would normally have and they gave us this number that number happens to be 1,093,000 so now we got it so that we got to use this formula and see the formula the way we would normally write it of course which would be this way solving for the cost of materials manufactured and now back into this number so this might be easier to see of course if we did if we just wrote it out probably a good one to write out by hand but i'm going to just try to plug it into excel here so if we plugged it out in an algebraic formula 562 plus x uh minus this 625,000 is going to equal 1093 so that, there's our formula. We can write it out that way, and it might be easier to see the algebra in that format. Then, of course, we're solving for x. We've got these two, two numbers on the same side, so we can uh, take care of those. So we're going to say x, and this number is uh, larger than this number, so it's going to be minus, minus, and then I'm going to say this uh, 625,000 minus the 562,000. And that's going to equal this number. And then we're going to get rid of this 63,000 by adding it. So we're going to we're going to add the 63,000, and we're going to add the 63,000 to both sides. And then we're going to get x, and that's going to be minus zero is going to equal. And we're going to say this equals this 1,093,000 plus the 63,000, and that means that x then we just put the equals here equals this number and then of course if we plug that back in to our formula here i'm going to say that now is this number we just figured that number out and then if we do our calculation i'll just rewrite it over here so we can see it uh, five six two plus this number minus this number and if we do that calculation this uh, raw materials at the beginning plus purchases minus ending raw materials and that gives us our, our same number so here here's what we calculated we plug it back in double check looks good